Heavenly Father, we want to thank you because one writer was able to say um, I was young I know I'm old and I've never seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed begging bread. We ask Lord God your blessings on the gifts as well as on the givers. As we come Lord God to your word we are reminded that your word to us is not only quick and powerful we are also reminded that your word we should hide in our hearts so that we wouldn't sin against you we are also told that your word is a lamp and a light and so father may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight O Lord my strength and my Redeemer Amen you may sit please I am still with the Old Testament and I know that our folk love the Old Testament. The Old Testament is so rich. And I want to take us to the book of Habakkuk. Habakkuk, or Habakkuk, depending on pronunciation, the third chapter. And I'm going to be reading from verse 17 to verse 19. And it says to us from the New Living Translation, Even though the fig trees have no blossoms, and there are no grapes on the vines, even though the olive crop fails, and the fields lay empty and barren. Even though the flocks die in the fields and the cattle barns are empty, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will be joyful in the God of my salvation. The sovereign Lord is my strength. He makes me as sure-footed as a deer, able to tread upon the heights. The theme that I am going to use today is simply this, even though I will. Even though I will. And they tell me, that even though it's almost identical in meaning with plain though, so the King James might say, though the fig tree, or another version might say, although. So they tell me that even though it's almost identical in meaning with plain though or although. The main difference, however, is that even though it's more emphatic, putting stronger emphasis on the contrast between the two clauses, it connects. And they further tell me that most times you have a negative, but you don't continue with a negative, that negative changes to a positive. And if you follow the text, you would pick that up. The book of Habakkuk, or Habakkuk is simply three chapters and the history behind that book is just amazing. We are all familiar with Israel being strong under David. So David assumed kingship 
and David had Israel like Barbados, as they would say, uh, Kofi Annan some years ago would have said that Barbados was punching above its weight. And similarly, Israel was punching above its weight under David. It so happened that David died and Solomon became king. And yes, Israel continued to bloom and to prosper. But the decline started when Solomon did some things that were not so good. And then his son Rehoboam became king. And he further did things and made bad decisions. He did things that were not pleasing in the sight of God. Resulting in the kingdom being divided. So you had Israel in the north having ten tribes. And Judah in the south having two tribes. The two tribes being Judah and Benjamin. And, and the capital of Israel was Samaria. And the capital of Judah was Jerusalem. Now, what happened is that there were a number of captivities. So we, we read about the Assyrian captivity and so on. And then you had the Babylonian captivity. And then um, Babylon was captured by Persia. And, and they had a king by the name of Cyrus who would have allowed the people to go back. King Cyrus gave the people permission to go back. So you would have had persons going back from time to time trying to get things back in order. So that when you read Nehemiah, you would come across that the walls were broken down etc. And that's just a part of the setting, a part of the backdrop as it relates to the book of Habakkuk. Little is known about this prophet. Little is known. Um, there's no ancestry really. Um, nothing to speak about. There are two things that we know. His name, which the book carries, Habakkuk, and that he was a prophet. Nothing much is further said about him. And the key verse, according to what persons would feel and say, the key verse that captures the entire book of Habakkuk is the just shall live by faith, or the righteous shall live by faith. Now, this book is not like the traditional prophetic book. And by the way, Habakkuk was a minor prophet. And again, you know, there were major prophets like Isaiah and Jeremiah. And then you had um, the minor prophets, Habakkuk and others, who were part of what, like I said, was called the minor prophets. Not necessarily because of content. But classification. The way how the book runs, it is not a case of Habakkuk saying that God is going to do this to the people, etc. But the book of Habakkuk, the more I read it, the more I meditated on it, it reminds me of Barbados, it reminds me of the world. Chapter 1 opens with Habakkuk questioning God's inactivity. Now, we would say that's a serious thing. Because here it was, in chapter 1 of the book of Habakkuk, Habakkuk is saying, God, all of these things are happening, and you are not doing anything about them. He spoke about violence. God, you see the violence, and nothing is happening. You are not doing anything. God, you see the injustice, and you are not doing anything. Now, that, that is not the normal approach at all. But Habakkuk was questioning the inactivity of God. Doesn't that remind you of us sometimes? God, 
Where are you when I'm looking for you to do this or do that for me? God, I have been praying to you about this and that and nothing has happened. Let me tell you that not only did Habakkuk question God's inactivity, but Habakkuk decided, God, I'm not going to question your inactivity alone, but I'm also going to question the information that you have given me. Because let me tell you that God answered him. Peruse chapter 1, chapter 1 at your ledger and see what comes out of that. In, from about verse 6 or so, God responds to him and God says to him, I am going to do something in this land that you're not going to believe. I am going to use people. And the people that God was referring to when he responded to him, he was simply saying, I'm going to use the Babylonians to put some pressure on you. He let them know. He let Habakkuk know that, look, the Babylonians are not easy at all. The Babylonians are not easy. So you know what? Habakkuk still not comfortable. He said, God, I'm questioning your inactivity. I'm, gonna, I'm questioning the information you have given me in response to my questioning your inactivity. But you know what, God, I'm going to do? I am going to take position. I am going to go on the wall, as it were. I'm going to go on my watchtower and look to see what you're going to do. Boy, he did exactly that. But this is where it gets sweet. Habakkuk questioned the inactivity. Habakkuk questioned the information received. But in chapter 3 of the book of Habakkuk is where Habakkuk intercedes. It has changed now from questioning inactivity to intercession. And hear what chapter 3 opened with. He said, I have heard about you, Lord. I've heard about all about you. I am filled with awe by your amazing works. I want to suggest to us today that the God we serve is known and will be known and will continue to be known. I have heard, I have heard all about you. I have seen you in operation. I see you moving across Edom, etc. I see you parting the waters and so on. I have seen you doing a number of things. But hear this, hear this. He goes on to say, as he gets near to the end, and where I would have pulled my theme from, even though there are no grapes on the vine. Now, now these, these are precious things, and I want us to understand that. Even though there are no grapes on the vine, and, and mind you, grapes were used for wine. And wine in that day was a precious commodity. If you doubt me, ask Mary. Because at the first miracle, the, 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 the turning of water into wine, we are told that at the wedding, when the wine ran out, that Mary went to Jesus and said, Were they in the wine? No, no, that was the most embarrassing thing to have happened, you know. Because even though persons knew that the bridegroom could be long in coming, even though they knew that, even though they would prepare for that, we are told that the wine ran out. Jesus simply said to her, Mine hour is not yet come. <laughs> Mary didn't say that to the people though. She said to them, Whatever he says to you to do, do it. And we are told that they fill some water pots with water. 
And the long and short of the account was that the wine that was given last was sweeter by far that what went first and they said this is counter to the normal what normally will happen is you serve the bad one first and then when you get later on you bring you bring out you know but you serve the good one yeah yeah you, you serve the bad one man but that wine that was served they want to know where that came from so wine grapes what they were a precious commodity back in the day and Habakkuk was saying, even though there are no grapes on the vine, even though we are not able to make wine, even though we are not able to celebrate, he said, even though, even though the olive crops fail, another precious commodity. Look, nothing new under the sun. Those people back in the day, used to use olive oil to anoint persons etc they used to use olive oil for other reasons today we are told that you should fry with what olive oil and when you go to the supermarket you know that olive oil is not cheap and depending on the type of olive oil that you purchase you will realize that the price is higher. So another precious commodity. And Habakkuk is saying, even though the olive crops fail. He goes on to say, even though the fields lie empty and barren. You, you, I'm not sure if you're getting this, you know. Because Habakkuk is saying all of the things that are able to impact and interfere with us. Even though these things might fail. So watch this. Our economy was built on what? What happened to it? They're saying to us that we should resort to agriculture and we should diversify etc we should not depend on tourism the things that kept us above water were now going under similarly the things that the people of that day held on to Habakkuk saying even though even though the fields lie empty and barren I, I, I ain't sure if you get it. Even though they lie empty, a lot of wasteland, etc. And even though the flocks die in the field and the cattle barns are empty, oh Lord, have mercy. Sheep, sheep, they were precious back then. Cows were precious back then. Cattle used for plowing, etc. Even though all of these things give hear what the prophet Habakkuk is saying even though even though even though I will joy oh glory to God I will joy I will rejoice in the Lord he says I will rejoice in the Lord the word of God says to us rejoice in the Lord always and again I say rejoice pastor Yes, please. You are telling me to rejoice when things are going bad? Yeah. I am not going to stand here and tell you that it is easy to rejoice when things are not going well. If I tell you that, I will be telling you a story. But what I'm going to tell you is that we have proof in the word of God from the man of God who was able to say that even though all of these things happen, I am going to rejoice in the Lord. Not only does he say that he's going to rejoice in the Lord, he said, I'm going to be joyful in the God of my salvation. I'm going to be joyful in the God of my strength. We are told that the joy of the Lord is our strength. 
You see, you see, if, if your joy is based on superficial things, when those things move away from under you, you're going to lose your joy. But if your joy is based on the deep things of God, my Lord, one songwriter said, I still have joy. One of my favorites, I still have joy. After all I've been through, I still have joy joy because the joy is not based on my circumstances but the joy is based on my connection to Christ my friends Habakkuk says I am going to be joyful in the God of my salvation I'm going to rejoice in the Lord he goes on to say the sovereign Lord is my strength from questioning inactivity to interceding and saying God I know you I have seen you at work I've heard about you and this is it this is it the sovereign Lord is my strength and then the scripture says to us that he's going to make my feet he is going to make me as sure-footed as a deer. He is going to make my feet like hind's feet so that I'll be able to step on the high places. Let me tell you, I had to check what sure-footed is all about. And they tell me, Brother Alden, that sure-footed has to do with being stable. You're not going to stumble. You're not going to slip. And Habakkuk was saying, the God that I serve, he is going to make my feet like Heinz's feet so that I'll be able to stand on my high places. They tell me, they tell me that the deer moves so fast and his front legs, as he is moving, they are able to pivot so that he can turn, etc., and continue moving. The God that we serve, my friends, will not allow us to stumble or fall. And there are just three things that I'm going to tie up with. Firstly, we need to trust God. You might be saying, I have been hearing that for years. I can tell you again. We have to trust God. God. I can't see him. I can't touch him. I talk to him. I am going to trust him. Listen to me. It's trust a man, right? It's trust a man. Or you trust a woman. And then the woman left you or the man left you. Trinidadians will call it tabanka. You understand? You can't sleep no more because my darling gone and left me. But I'm saying to us today that when we trust God, even though I will. So even though all of these things are happening, I am going to trust God because he never failed me yet. Let me move on to, to say not only must we trust God, you see, because we can say that we trust God, but we must also adhere to the teachings of God. Come on. You see, you see, it's one thing to say you trust God, you know. But it's another thing to adhere to the teachings that are found in scripture because they're linked. So let me go back. If you trust your partner, you ain't gonna worry. Somebody say amen. If you don't trust your partner, you got a little spot of bother. You see, 
when you trust God, you are going to adhere to what he says to you. Because it's found in his word. So when your partner says to you, and let me be inclusive, when your child or children say to you, I love you. You take that and you say, yes, that is true. And then they will demonstrate that love to you and for you by doing things. The promises are in the word of God. Persons trying, oh, am I, listen to me. It's all in there in the word of God. Even though I will. I will trust God. I will adhere to his teachings. And finally, I'm going to tell others. I'm going to trust God. I'm going to adhere to the teachings found in his word. And I'm going to tell others. Let me say to you. That in these times that we are in. Persons are looking for hope. Even the people in the church are getting hopeless. And just like Habakkuk, they're asking God, how long, how long, God, are you going to allow us to go through this? How long? God, you are inactive. I want to say to us today that God is always on time every single time. And I want to say that when God deals with a situation, he deals with it well. I want to say to us that when God said, I'm going to allow the Babylonians to put some pressure on you, etc. But you know what? I am going to come through for you because that's a covenant that I have made centuries ago. We are to tell others that seemingly are hopeless. That God is still extending hope to us. So even though there are no blossoms on the fig tree, even though there are no blossoms, we planted some sweet peppers and we only got one sweet pepper today. One. You see some blossoms. But even though the sweet pepper does not blossom or only give us one, we can still plant. Even though, even though the ground is barren, nothing seems to be coming. And even though the cattle and the flock, they die in the fields. The one thing we are going to do is trust God. I can tell you that as I follow this journey called life, as I look at the experiences along the way. The one thing I can say to you with confidence that my trust is in God. That's the one thing I can say to you with confidence. Because you see, God has never told us that it is going to be easy. He has never told us that. And the prophet had to deal with that. God, why all of this? The injustice. The violence. All these things that are happening. But he concludes with what I call the intercession. Um, they said that it's a prayer 
they, they say that it's a, it's a psalm. They also say that it should be played to musical instruments, etc. Um, but the thing about it is, the just, the righteous, the right living shall live by faith. Not faith in a God that is an idol. Because in the same book, he, he speaks to all that is going to happen to the proud, etc. Those who gain wealth by unjust and unfair means, he speaks to all of that. But the righteous shall live by faith. The Apostle Paul echoes those same sentiments in Galatians. He also echoes the same sentiments in Romans, Galatians 3, 11, Romans 1, 17, and Hebrews 10, 38. The just shall live by faith. The question is, when all of these things seem not to work, What do you have left? Are you going to go under? Or is your confidence and your faith in God of such that you are not going to buckle? The last time we were here, I would have said, if you want prayer, we're not going to ask you to come forward. But we're going to ask you to raise your hands. I'm going to do that again today. And maybe in the midst of all that is happening, your faith began to waver. You know? Imagine people in parts of the island not getting any water but receiving a water bill. But to me that don't make no sense. And they're supposed to pay. And imagine you are not getting any water and somebody is going to say to you because your water bill is so high, no, no well, you're not getting any water your water bill is high, and somebody is going to say, check for leaks. With that. If you get a water leak, you can check for. To me, that making no sense. Imagine, imagine these bills coming at you. And when you go to the supermarket, if you're not watchful and if you're not mindful, you'll realize that what would have cost you. Let me, let me give, I, I, I can give you an example. A certain brand of milk was being sold at certain outlets for $2.19. That same brand of milk that was being sold at certain outlets for two dollars and 19 cents is now being sold for two dollars and 49 cents now simple basic arithmetic tells me that that's a 30 cent increase so if you but if you purchase 10 cartoons of milk with a 30 cent increase that is three dollars multiply three dollars by a 30 cent increase on 10 items that you have not paid attention to, simple mass again, that's $30 just so. Imagine all of that is happening and you're saying, trust God. If you're here this morning, again, truth be told, I really don't know where you're at. I can tell you there are times when I feel things in my spirit, but really and truly, I don't know where you're at. But I can say to you confidently, in these times that we are in, if your faith is not in God, you're going to melt like butter in hot sun. Because all the footings 
that we used to hold dear are given away under our feet. As we stand together, as we stand together, you know, sometimes you wish you had the answers to all of life's challenges. You know, sometimes you wish that you could fix all of the issues they are. The reality is we can't. But there's a God who is able to. So if you're a little shaky this morning, when you raise your hand, don't worry about the speculation. You know your relationship with your God. You know where you want to go with your God. So that you'll be able to say, even though, even though I will so even though I'm unable to nip to Trinidad and say Provy boy I really miss you you've really impacted my life you did our engagement you remember that you were there for us we could leave Barbados and land at you and you open your doors to us even though I can't do that I'm going to celebrate the memories of the man that would have impacted my life my wife's life and a whole set of others even though I might not know what is going to happen the next minute, the next second. God, I will trust you because it's in your hands. So if you are here and you want to slip your hand up as the team comes.